Welcome to today's sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence and today we're talking about the Good Samaritan. But let's pray first. Father, thank you today, Lord, that we can talk about this wonderful story from the Bible. Lord, and I pray for wisdom. I pray, Lord, that, that you will teach us and help us, Father, how to be good Samaritans in this world. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Welcome to, to, to today's sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence and as I just said today, the topic, the Good Samaritan that we read in Luke 10 verse 25 to 37. Now, <clears throat> let me start with this um, interesting questions asked by lawyers in court cases. You will understand just in a moment why I mentioned this. But let's read this. The following are questions asked by um, lawyers in the real court trials. Um, <clears throat> she had three children, right? Yes. How many were boys? None. Were there any girls? I show you exhibit three and ask you if you recognize that picture. That's me, he said. Were you present when the picture was taken? And um, the other one, you say that the stairs went down to the basement. Yes, he answered. And these stairs, did they go up also? So as you can see, the lawyers use these questions to cross-examine and see exactly what happened. And a lawyer also asked these kind of questions to Jesus. If you read here in Luke 10, 25, 37, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? So as you can see, this lawyer tested Jesus, the very same like the questions I just read to you. And he was testing Jesus. He was talking about lawyer, as you can see. What is your reading of it? What a great answer Jesus gave him. Ask him, what do you think does the law say? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. I mean, this lawyer knew exactly what he was talking about and he gave the right answer. Like that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. The perfect answer but he wanted to justify himself said to jesus and who is my neighbor here is that tricky question who is my neighbor he thought he's going to put jesus in the corner here then jesus answered and said a certain man went down from jerusalem to jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him from his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. It's beautiful. This Samaritan had compassion on this man. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring an oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denary, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. What a wise answer Jesus had for this lawyer who thought he could... Um, you know, ask Jesus questions that he couldn't answer. And the answer with this beautiful story of the Good Samaritan that we are going to look at today. So let's get started. The parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So um, what shall I do 
to have eternal life? This is what he asked. But Jesus answered with a question. So how do you read the law? I love this, how Jesus was just so wise. And he talked about love your neighbor. Now, what is a neighbor? Well, neighbor is people around you. It's not like the, the person living next door. It's people that we come in contact with every day. But this um, teacher of the law, this lawyer, his motive was less than perfect. And let's read that in the ASV. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and made trial of him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So this lawyer, as you can see right here in the Bible, he stood up and he had this little trial going with Jesus. He challenged Jesus. And um, his motive wasn't pure at all. The GNB says, a teacher of the law came up and tried to trap Jesus. He was out there to trap Jesus, to get him in a corner, to get him guilty, because as you know, they wanted to kill him. Now the next point, the Good Samaritan, a term widely used. You know, nowadays um, we use this term a lot. If somebody takes care of old people or give their money away or something, we will, we will talk about them like um, mentioning the Good Samaritan. Now, let's look at the heathen. Luke 10 verse 30. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, we live in a broken world with broken people. Um, this world is broken, and we actually broke it ourselves. Because of it broken, many people became hard. Let's read Matthew 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 2 Timothy 3, 3 verse 1 to 5. But you know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. This is exactly what is happening in the world nowadays. And we are here. Many think little of life. Let's look at some st statistics here from America. In 2009, there were 15,241 murders. That means one every 35 minutes. National white robberies, 2009, American st statistics, 408,207. That means one robbery every two minutes. We are living in a broken world with broken people. Nothing new under the sun. The road to Jericho, the way of blood and the bloody past. This is what the road to Jericho was called in those days. The way of blood and the bloody past. Thieves invested this road to Jericho. It was known for um, these thieves that were hiding and ready to trap people. The heathen, they were the first in our story. Now, let's read the second person we need to see in the story is the herd. Luke 10 verse 30. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Let's look at half dead. Now, Greek compound word is hamatias, hamitianus. Hamatias is semi or partial for date. Is there something here? Matthew 8, 22. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Matthew 23, 27. Woe well unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto white um, specklers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Luke 10, 32. 
It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this brother was dead. He is talking about the prodigal son, and is alive again, and was lost and is found. So here the Bible talks about all this dead people, you know, not dead in in human, but dead in spirit, dead in emotions, dead inside, like this brother who was lost but was found. John 5.25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and that year shall live. So it is amazing. The Bible talks about the dead, but it's dead in spirit, dead inside, and shall hear the voice of God and shall live. Regardless, the world is full of hurting people. Many people are hurt um, because some of them bring it on themselves. And this man on the road, he walked alone. Was he stupid? Well, again, broken people, a broken world. Some are hurt because of their own actions, and some are hurt because of the actions of others. Regardless as to how they got hurt, the world walks on by. Nobody really cares. Um, Jesus seeks out the hurt, the weary, the heavy laden. Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't just walk by. Here he says in Matthew 11, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think this is one of the biggest things the world is looking for nowadays. The people around us is rest and peace from the stuff that they go through. Luke 14, 12 to 14. Then said he also to him that babe him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest thou also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. So, so yeah, Jesus talks about, don't only invite your rich neighbors, <laughs> I like this, your friends, your brethren. No, when you have a dinner, Jesus said, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, so that you will be blessed in the time of judgment. It is easy to find hurting people. You may ask Pastor Lawrence, where can I find hurting people? Just open your eyes. Just look around you and you will see them every day. Well, now let's look at the hollow. So here in Luke 10, 31, 32, we read, Now by chains a certain priest, well, the pastor or the priest, you know, the spiritual leader of that day came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. And when I read this verse in preparation for the sermon, I really saw myself in this. How many times have I looked away? How many times have I seen somebody in need, maybe sitting next to the road, um, begging for money? Really, yeah, yeah, in Korea, just go to the train stations and you will see a lot of beggars and sometimes you're just tired <clears throat> sometimes you're just in your own thoughts your own life and you look the other side exactly what these people did we are all guilty of this well they were the the religious people of that time now they were estimated <clears throat> 12,000 priests and levites living in jericho and these were the, the religious people of those days. And they were the spiritual leaders. And, you know, they dish out advice and wisdom all day long. But here, this very simple thing, taking care of the man that was laying half dead next to the road, they missed it. They totally missed it. Now, why? Because they were more interested in their rituals than to taking care of this man. Perhaps they thought the man was dead, you know, because their rule says in Numbers 19.16, And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open field, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean for seven days. So maybe, you know, the tradition, the things that they believed here from the Old Testament, which was a rule way back, 
Maybe they thought this guy is dead. So if we touch him, we will be unclean for seven days. That's maybe why they walk by the other side. And, um, you know, John 8, 28 says, Then led they Jesus from Capernaum unto the hall of judgment. It was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Again here we saw when Jesus was tested and tried, they didn't go into this hall of suffices because um, of the dead people that was things that happened there. So for them, it was more important to follow their rules than to taking care about the people, of the people around them. And I think we do that a lot. We are also guilty of this, even to this day. Here they are planning and they are plotting and producing the murder of Jesus Christ, but it's, that doesn't make them unclean. Wow. And then they are worried about being clean. They are worried about not being sermonously defiled. But the man wasn't dead. This is the thing, the man wasn't dead. So they were obligated by a law to help. Because Exodus 23 verse 4 to 5, the very same Old Testament say, If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. Look at this from the Old Testament. This Exodus 23 verse 4 to 5. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. If you meet your enemy's ox, this is your enemy's ox, or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. Just imagine you walk down the road and you see your enemy's a donkey or ox, something going wrong there, and by law you had to take care of that donkey and take it back to the enemy. If, if you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, and you would refrain from helping it, you shall surely help him with it. Wow, what a rule. So they also had to follow this rule, but they didn't follow this one. Deuteronomy 22, 1-4 says the same for the brothers. So they were more interested in their rituals than just being plainly human, just being soft-hearted. Now, holier than thou. Perhaps they had a holier than thou attitude. I'm not helping that guy, they might have said. Or he deserves what he got. Isn't this what we do? Isn't this words that went through your mind and my mind sometimes? The other thing is they also could be afraid. You know, this might be a trap because the robbers might still be there. And, um, you know, they just said, well, I'm not going to fall into this. And I see this a lot. Even myself, again, we see hurting people, we see things going wrong, and we stay out of it. We just stay out of it. Do unto others. But the Bible says here, do unto others. The lawyer missed the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7 verse 12, Jesus said, Therefore, all things, whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So definitely this lawyer missed this verse where Jesus said to unto others as you want them to do unto you. The hurt people, brothers and sisters, they need help. If it was you who were hurt, would you want help? Well, the hallowed was less than helpful. The priest, the Levite, they walked by on the other side. And this brings me to the next person that we're looking at today. And this is the helper. Hallelujah, there was a helper. Luke, Luke 10, verse 33 to 35. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. This is what the world needs, brothers and sisters, compassion. You also need that. We both, all of us need it on a daily basis. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring an oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two dairy, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. What an awesome, good Samaritan this was. A Samaritan? Seriously? Well, the audience of this parable is was poor blood Jews. And Samaritans, they were despised by the Jews. 
they were denounced in the synagogues. You know, they were not allowed in the synagogues. The Samaritans had commingled their Jewish blood with the Gentiles. This is why the Jews didn't like them, because they mixed with the Gentiles. You know, and the Jews uh, was up there in their mind and the Gentiles were down there. Um, they were rejected. They were literally the outcasts of that time. Perhaps the Jews' eyes lit up where, with joy when they heard Jesus mentioned a Samaritan, the the villain. You know, they thought, okay, in this story, Jesus is going to talk about the bad Samaritans. But this villain in the eyes was about to be the hero of the story. How wonderful this is. Well, now let's look at the survey of the Samaritan. Who was this one? Number first, he had compassion. Don't you hate it when someone you hate does something good? Well, the second thing, com compassion moved him. This good Samaritan was moved by compassion. Now, that we read in Luke 10, 33, 34. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. This guy had compassion in his heart on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. So compassion is only compassion when it reaches out. Yes, I felt this many times when I saw these beggars at the train stations here in South Korea. I always feel my heart clinching. I always feel compassion. But just sometimes I put my, my, my money where my mouth is and take that, you know, that money and drop it in. Not always. Many a time I walk past them and I believe you do the same brothers and sisters. And we're not talking only about money here, we're talking about people with bigger needs than money. The Samaritan is going the second mile. Well, he even wasn't scared of danger. You know, there the, the strap was set by robbers and the robbers must still be nearby. But it he he didn't care. I know in my country if you um, drive past a robbery scene or an accident or something, you just pass by because you don't know what's going on. You, you don't know if the robbers are still there. We South Africans understand that maybe more than anybody else. But exactly, you know, this good Samaritan didn't care about the robbers. He just went for it. It cost him something. It cost him a few things. It cost him his time. He had to spend, I think, a day or two with this... Um, guy that was beaten by the thieves. It cost him money, you know, as we just read, he paid the in. He said, if you spend anything more on him, just keep the bowl, I will come and pay it. He also added wine and oil on his wounds. So it cost him something. Now let's look at the application. We see the half day daily. How can we apply this parable of the Good Samaritan to us? Number one, our world is full of hurting people. As I said a few times now, our world are full of half-dead people. Just look around. What do we think when we see them? Do we have compassion? Do we really care? Or do we say, run? Let's just run away from them? Or let's walk by on the other side of the road, like we all did many times? Well, I've got enough problems of my own. This is also something that goes through our mind sometimes. You know, my life is uh, too busy, too crazy. I'm too busy at work. How can I take care of this brother or sister with this problem at this moment? Compassion is going to cost you. Know this. Having compassion is definitely going to cost you. It's going to cost you time, my brother and sister. It's going to cost you money. Sometimes you need to put your hand in your pocket and take out that money to take care of that person who just lost everything or just have nothing. It's going to change your plans. Sometimes you might have plans. You might be on your way to this or that. And when somebody say, uh, knock on your door, can I please talk to you? And this person just tears up and starts with whatever they need help with. Change your plan. Just said, wait, okay, this dinner can wait or this appointment can wait. And take care of that one. And I'm preaching to myself as I'm guilty of all of this. 
It's going to put you at risk. Being a good Samaritan will definitely put you at risk. And it's going to cost you, as we just saw. But it is worth it, my brother and sister. It's absolutely worth it. Worth it. Compassion is the key. We need compassion. We need God's compassion. Matthew 9.36 But when he saw the multitudes, and this is talking about Jesus, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted, and they were scattered aboard, a sheep having no shepherd. Yet our Lord Jesus had compassion on the people around him. Matthew 14.14 14, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion again toward them and he healed their sick. And Matthew 20.34 So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. So compassion is a Jesus thing. It is something, brother and sister, that we need to do. Something that we need to follow Jesus and have compassion on the world around us. Marcus 10, uh, Marcus 1, 40, 41. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Again, the word compassion is highlighted for you, my brother and sister, on the screen. Jesus was full of compassion. How about you and how about me? Judas 1.22 And of some have compassion making a difference. Well, this brings me to the last thing we need to see in the story. And this is the headline. The headline. Now, Luke 10, 36, 7. So, which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. I believe that these words is ringing in your ears, in my ears. Go and do likewise. Jesus is also talking to us today. I have a question. What is the most extreme danger one can be in? Being lost. I mean being lost. If you die and you go to hell, I think this is the, no, this definitely is the biggest danger you can be in. Headed for hell. Would we be liable if we walked by a house on fire and we walked on by? Of course, if you see a house burning and you do, do nothing, you will be guilty. And as wounded and left half dead, many of those that we came in contact with on a daily basis. What are we doing to help? Go, though, and do likewise. Help, that's what we are here for. Which side of the street do you walk on? When you see these people in life, broken, full of the, the things that life bestowed upon them, are you walking by on the other side? Conclusion. Which of these three was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? He who showed mercy on him. Jesus said, he who showed mercy. Go thou and do likewise. I wondered if this lawyer showed mercy. I wonder if I will show mercy. I wonder if you will do it. I know Jesus will do it. I know Jesus already did it. Ephesians 2, 4 to 8. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, whereof he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and have raised up us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Even now, while we were dead in sin, God came and saved us and put us together in heavenly places, that in the ages to come He might show the exceedingly riches of His grace in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved, through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. God's mercy and compassion is yours if you will accept it. Well, I've said a lot and we read a lot and we talked a lot, but I think it all comes back to this one thing. Do you have compassion? I believe you do. Well, use that. In this coming week, maybe look for one person who needs compassion, who needs help, or two or three, and start to look at them rather than the other way. And <laughs> I'm preaching to myself first. Maybe um, uh, iced coffee, maybe a chocolate, maybe a 
don't worry, it will all be okay, God is in control. All these things is stuff that we can do for, you know, to help the people around us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wisdom from the Bible of the Good Samaritan. And Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you will help us. And Lord, that you will help us not to look the other way, but to look in their direction. And Lord, when we stand in front of broken people in a broken and dying world, please give us wisdom. Give us patience. Give us love, Lord, to reach out to these people and be the hands and feet and the mouth and the ears of Christ Jesus. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. It was wonderful to talk to you about this parable of the Good Samaritan. And go and do likewise. As Jesus said, go and do likewise is all I can say. From me, Pastor Lawrence, goodbye and God bless.